We have a lesson that we might give a lot of thought to these days. There's a great deal of criticism of television programming, but that is not going to be the burden of my discussion this morning. I have something else that seems to me to be infinitely more important, and that is that man is no longer simply a biped without feathers, as Diogenes likened him. Man is a thinking creature. He should not be brought up by a, a trainer like a dog. He should not be taught only to obey. He should not be fed because he obeys. He should not have a life of luxury, perhaps, because he happens to obey a rich person. The actual problem is that the human being has a mind that was given to him to think with. It was an active organ, an organ to do something. It was not simply a receptive faculty to listen, to hear, and to see. Most people in various fields of activity never participate in those practices and policies which stretch the mental power and make it do things that we want it to do. In the modern world, we train the mind by education to give us a profession or a trade or a craft or membership in a union or whatever it may be. We listen to the instruction, we get the job, we stay with the job, and in all this procedure we have done very little thinking. We have followed policy, we have obeyed rules, we have done what the boss told us to, and we may have taken a few special courses in computerization or something of that nature. But the real creative faculties of the mind have not been used at all. So at the end of one of these harrowing days, in which uh, most of the harrow has now been eliminated, we go home, sit down, and sit down in front of the television, and perhaps spend anywhere from two to six hours watching what? We're not watching anything that was going to make us really think a good deal. If it's an educational program, it will be turned off very quickly. We watch sports. We listen to the news, which is usually highly um, influenced politically. We go through a few horror dramas, westerns, a few very poor humor programs, and then settle down to the great run of family epics in which uh, we learn nothing but may choose one or two characters to pull for because they seem to create sympathy and one or two whom we love to hate because we don't like them. Now, this constitutes a big intellectual experience. And by the time we have finished with that, we are so exhausted, we fall into bed. In the daytime, we have all kinds of domestic programs, programs which may or may not bear upon any factual situation. We may have a few instructive ones on non-commercial programming. But we listen, we watch, and that just go out and get a cold beer or something of this nature. Nothing happens upstairs in ourselves. Nothing is being developed as a factor in the growth of our own thinking. We are not thinking, actually, and if we are thinking, we are not doing anything about it because most of the thoughts are non-factual. So here we go all through an entire lifetime surrounded by all types of information which we accept only through the eyes and ears. And when the time comes, we do very little to solve our own problems. A person whose mind is being used every day to find new values, accomplish new works, do new things that have not been done, improve the quality of living, solve the personal problems of his life, these are the things that help to exercise the mind. But to drift along from work to television to bed and then up and again the next day is not doing anything to make people. It is only continuing a humdrum which is only one step above animal existence. 
This means that in some respect, we need creative programs. Now, a creative program is something that we do because basically we want to express ourselves. We do not wish merely to do what everyone else does. We want to do something that will satisfy our own inner impulses. But for the most part, these impulses just are not active enough to give us any positive directive. So it seems that one thing we have to do to get away from this uh, hypnosis of the tube is to realize that we have faculties within ourselves that do not need to be subjected to this continual negative conditioning. That we are simply capable of thinking rather than merely of watching the antics of someone else. It's so everywhere today. In music we have the same problem. Uh, we go and listen to a good concert and we applaud the performers but for the most part, we do not think of putting ourselves under the discipline of music. Another individual is much interested in the dance, but he can barely stay on his feet on the ballroom floor. We see people that are interested in all kinds of crafts. They collect them, but they don't create them. Now, something has to happen to change our way of life from admiring the creations of others to the development of creative capacity in ourselves. So if we want to really have a, a, a great history, we can study our own inner lives. If we want a great theater, we can be the, both the audience and the cast. If we want any of the inner understandings which make for philosophy, mysticism, and so forth, they're all available inside of ourselves. The only thing we've got to do is bring it out and we bring it out by dedication, gaining strength in the inner life just as the athlete gains it by daily discipline. By the proper mental, emotional disciplines, we can become healthy individuals in terms of our minds, our emotions, our hearts, and our jobs. These are the things we've got to work for. And if it means that we must do it, we can with one quick twist to the wrist get rid of most of the corruptions of society and face the fact that these are imaginary corruptions. We've got plenty of real ones. We don't have to build them up that way. What we've got to do is find out what corruptions are still lurking in us and correct them. And as soon as we correct the mistakes in ourselves, we begin to see better values in other people because we see in others usually what we are ourselves focused upon. So we live there. Don't let the great big bad tube get you. Uh, be very careful about it and when uncertain, turn it off. And you'll find that if you turn it off to do something interesting, beautiful, or wonderful, you will never miss it again. You ne cannot turn it off successfully, however, until there is something you want to be or something you want to do right then and there that is more important than the tube. If you think it out that way, I think it'll work out all right in the end.